problem is from the curvilinear motion section in the Hibbler book. So let's write that down. This is Hibbler, this is dynamics. And this problem comes from the 14th edition and I think it's in the 15th edition also. Okay, so this one tells us that we've got this car going along this curved path and it's gonna start from rest at S equals zero, here's S, and it increases its speed at a rate of four meters per second squared. Notice that's A sub T. We wanna find the time when the magnitude of acceleration becomes 20 meters per second squared, and we wanna figure out what value of S we have when that happens. Okay, so let's write down what we know. We start from rest, right, that's what it says here. So V is gonna be zero when S is zero. We know our tangential acceleration, a sub t is four meters per second squared. And then I wanna know the time when the magnitude of the acceleration is 20 meters per second squared, and then we wanna know s. Okay, so let's look at this problem. So at this point, you have to decide between um, rectilinear motion or curvilinear motion, right? So if you got this on a test, you have to look at this and notice this is a curved path. So that means you've got curvilinear motion. And since we know the path we're taking, this would be a good option for normal tangential coordinates. Now, using normal tangential coordinates, let's write out what we have for A. So the magnitude of acceleration will have a normal component and a tangential component, right? So the magnitude then would be AT squared plus a n squared, take the square root. Now looking at these, this tangential term right here, that's gonna be like the regular acceleration you usually think of. Okay, like if you have a train that's, you know, accelerating 10 meters per second squared for 10 seconds, that's your a sub t. The a sub n comes from the curvature of the path that we're on. Okay, so we're always gonna have that a sub n term if we've got curvature in our path. All right, so let's see what we can do with this equation here. I know what a sub t is, all right, because that's the rate that the car is increasing its speed. So let's write that down. And then a sub n, I know I have a sub n because I've got this curvature and I've got this radius here, all right? So this is our radius of curvature. The equation we use for that is v squared over rho. All right, now do we know what v is? We have no idea what v is, right? So let's just leave it as v squared, but we do know what rho is. Rho, like I said, is radius of curvature, so that's gonna be 40. So let's put 40 there. And then what about the magnitude value? Do I know the magnitude? We do, right, because it said 20 meters per second squared. So let's put all that together. So we get 20 meters per second squared. That's gonna equal the square root of four. And you can write in these units if you want. Square that four, and then we've got a sub n. So that's gonna be v squared over rho, which is 40, and then square that. Okay, so if we look now, I have one equation, one unknown, where v is my unknown. So if I can get rid of this square root and everything, we can go ahead and solve for V. So let's do that. Let's square both sides. So we'll have 400. Um, and you can go ahead and put these units in if you want. Okay, and then we've got V4. Actually, it wouldn't be 4. We need to square that. It's going to be 4 squared meters squared per second to the fourth plus V to the fourth over 1600 meters squared. Okay, so now we've got that. So you can go ahead and then do the algebra to get V. So move this four squared or 16 over here, multiply by the 1600, and then you get V. All right, and you're gonna get 27.997, and that should be meters per second. All right, now we've got that. So let's, uh, let's see what to do with that. All 
Okay, so let's look right here at what we know. So we've got this V at this point when the magnitude of acceleration is 20. Now we know we started from rest, right? So if we started from rest at zero, this is gonna be my final velocity. And I want time and S, I can go ahead and use my kinematic equations. All right, and I can do that because A sub T is four, right? So that's a constant. That means we can use those constant acceleration kinematic equations. Okay, so let's write down what those are. So first of all, let's do the simplest one. So V equals V naught plus AT. Now, if we look right here in this equation, this acceleration is the A sub T. Okay, so the acceleration in these kinematic equations will always be that A sub T, not A sub N, um, and it's not gonna be this magnitude, it's just A sub T. Okay, so let's write that out. And now if we plug everything in, the only unknown will be T. Okay, so final velocity, 27.997 meters per second. Initial velocity was zero right, because we started at rest. And then we have our acceleration, which is the tangential term. It was increasing speed, so it's positive. And then we've got T. Okay, so now when we solve, we get 7.0 seconds. Okay, so there's our time. And then now we need S. How can we find S? Well, let's look at another kinematic equation. So I chose this one, V squared equals V naught squared plus two A times the change in displacement. Okay, so now if we look, let's plug in our values. Final velocity, 27.997, square that. That equals the initial velocity, which was zero plus two times A, A is the A sub T, right? So four meters per second squared, and then we need our change in displacement. Okay, S, that's the final displacement, that's what I want. The initial displacement was where we started, so that is gonna be zero, right? Because it told us right here. So we've got zero there. Now we can solve for S, our final displacement. So we got 97.98 meters. Okay, and that's how you go about um, getting your final displacement. So on these problems, don't forget about these equations here. A lot of students forget about those. They haven't disappeared just because um, we're in a new section, right? You can still use them. The key though is to remember that this acceleration in these equations is your a sub t, okay? This a sub n is brought about just from the curvature of the path, okay? So there you have that one. Hopefully that was helpful. I will see you all next time.